So hello everyone, welcome to Bajira YAS Academy. So we have been discussing previous year questions, right? So today we have a set of questions where we have been discussing about India's ties with Asia. Okay, so Asian grouping. So Asian is known as Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and also. Uh, increasing geopolitical, geoeconomic, and geostrategic importance of uh, Asian continent because now Asian continent has emerged as a, a new center of great power politics. So, Asian continent and India's ties with Asia. Okay, so we will understand all these aspects. So, apart from that, we also have Russia Ukraine war now. Uh, we all know how Russia Ukraine war had a large impact on the, uh, you know, different different aspects. Whether it is energy security, food security, fertilizer security, in fact, in India's presidency or G20 summit, Russia Ukraine war has one of the prominent aspect where we have uh, we have achieved a consensus and where we have taken several steps to ensure food security and fertilizer security along with energy security. Now in this context the first question is about India must capitalize on Asia Asians eagerness to engage. Right. So Asian is association of Southeast Asian nations. So Asian grouping comprises of 10 countries. So 10 countries which are part of Southeast Asia and East Asia. Now, ASEAN is known as one of the most successful regional organization. So, in fact, several geopolitical experts suggest that SARC should follow ASEAN way. So, I hope all of you know about SARC. SARC is South uh, Asian Regional Cooperation. Okay. So, SARC is a South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. Now, SARC is a least integrated region. This is one of the least integrated region across uh, the world. However, on the other hand, ASEAN is one of the most successful organization in terms of intra-regional trade, intra-regional connectivity, cooperation on several other aspects. So therefore, in the context of Indo-Pacific, so I hope all of you know about Indo-Pacific. So what is Indo-Pacific? Indo-Pacific is a large geographical extent right from eastern margins of African continent to the west of South America and North America. So this is called as Indo-Pacific region. Now Indo-Pacific has emerged as a, a new geopolitical construct. So all of us know that it is a new geopolitical construct. Now, in this new geopolitical construct for power projection, for dominance, several other countries have been coming to this region, whether it is United States, India, US, uh, uh, European Union, China, even Russia. Okay, so all these countries are major power centers. So they have been focused on the Indo Pacific geopolitical region. Okay, so this is an emerging Indo-Pacific geopolitical construct. Now, in this context, every country has been coming up with their own Indo-Pacific policy. So, what is the objective of this Indo-Pacific policy? The overall objective of the Indo-Pacific policy is to ensure free, open, inclusive Indo-Pacific. So, whenever you go through the newspapers, you very often come across this word that free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific region. So now every country which is coming up with a vision document or a framework has been emphasizing on free and open Indo-Pacific region. Now why they have been emphasizing on free and open Indo-Pacific region? So because of Chinese assertiveness and aggression in the region. So in fact, China has been imposing restrictions on freedom of navigation and also freedom of overflight 
and china has also been building artificial islands across the indo pacific mostly the south china sea and china also have contested relations contested ties with several other countries whether it is japan and uh, south korea and even the asian countries itself now as i already told you asian is one of the most successful organization right they have been cooperating on several issues right from commerce to culture and people to people ties so in this respect every indo pacific policy or framework of any country they have recognized asian centrality okay in fact india has also come up with the indo pacific policy and in indo india's indo pacific policy also we have recognized asian centrality asian centrality means in the indo pacific asian organization and countries which are part of asian have been recognized their ability to play a larger role is being recognized so all the countries which are coming to the indo pacific will recognize the asian's key role in the region now this is the geo strategic and geo political dimension of asian grouping so whenever we talk about the asian's overall strength in uh, in terms of commerce manufacturing export potential export potential and even the supply chain resilience so in all these respects these countries are considered as heavyweights so uh, you also very often come across the term that china plus one so what this china plus one strategy so this strategy is uh, after the covid 19 pandemic the manufacturing units of companies the mncs have been shifting to other countries right from uh, china to other countries so asian countries have become a favorite destination for those companies so they are shifting their manufacturing bases to asian countries so in fact india has also been competing with these asian countries in order to attract the manufacturing bases they are shifting their operations from china to other countries however countries like vietnam indonesia and malaysia they have the advantage over india so they have skilled population and they have managed to maintain their manufacturing bases and they have also providing favorable policy for these manufacturing companies along with other human resources so because of all these factors they have been shifting their manufacturing bases to asian countries however this is all uh, not relevant for this question but i am explaining the background okay so why not uh, take this moment to understand what is the role of asian okay in the indo pacific region so how india could uh, cooperate with asia so that india could can also achieve the goal of supply chain resilience so we all know that india is heavily dependent on china for several key supplies so in this respect we are looking to diversify our import sources now asian can be more reliable partner for us so in this context the question saying that india must capitalize on asians eagerness to engage okay so asian is eager to engage with india so why asian is eager to engage with india so there are multiple reasons for the same okay for example india is the largest market india's largest market and india could balance growing chinese assertiveness or chinese influence in the region okay because these asian countries have concerns with respect to china because particularly because of the south china sea so apart from india balancing role india also have a capabilities okay for example if you look at the technology 
space, skilled human resources, and they also wanted to diversify their supply chains, and India could play potentially key role. So, because of all these reasons, these Asian countries have been showing eagerness, willingness to engage with India. So, therefore, in this particular context, India must capitalize. India must leverage Asians' eagerness to engage. Right? Now, in this context, we will try and understand what exactly is Asian. So, as I already told you, Asian is a group of countries which are in the South uh, East Asia and East Asia. Okay? So, what are those countries? What are those 10 countries? So, please remember, this is important for your exam, your prelims exam, because already G20 member countries has been asked by UPSC in previous year questions. Which of the uh, following member countries are part of the G20 grouping? So, in a similar sense, because of the Indo-Pacific and growing importance for the ASEAN, ASEAN grouping, UPSC even may ask about uh, the member countries of the Asian grouping. So, uh, if we go through the member countries right from the top, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore. So, this is Singapore. Indonesia, Brunei. So, these all 10 countries, these are all 10 countries including Philippines are part of the Asian grouping. Okay. So they are in the East Asia and also Southeast Asia. Now after that, what exactly is the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation? Sorry. So what is Asia? So Association of Southeast Asian Nations. So as I have already told you, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. In short, Asian is a 10 nation grouping. Okay. So this is a 10 nation grouping and it is considered as one of the most successful and also most influential groupings in the Southeast Asia. So in fact, if you take all the regional groupings across the globe, ASEAN is one of the most successful, most successful regional grouping. Okay. So still cooperation successfully you know, uh, the cooperation between all these Asian countries, uh, you know, no way comparable with the any other grouping because they have understood the opportunities. So they have also understood the areas for the cooperation and they have been, uh, you know, they have also identified the common challenges between all these countries and working on to resolve those challenges. So because of these commonalities, commonalities. So, the ASEAN grouping, the ASEAN grouping is most successful regional organization because of so many commonalities between all these countries. Now, the other factor which we need to understand is that so all these countries, so there is no one country which has been dominating the grouping or which has been dominating the other countries. So, if you look at the SAC, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, so, India has always been playing a dominant role. Okay. So, in fact, other SARC members uh, very often dub India as a big brother rather than elder brother. So, if you look at the, the Asian grouping, so there is no country like India uh, within the Asian grouping which has been dominating the group as a, uh, you know, uh, as itself. So, these are the member countries. So, I've already told you the member countries of the star grouping. Okay, so go to all the member countries, right? So if I tell you that uh, this Asian grouping, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, so this Asian grouping was formed in the year 1967 in Bangkok. Okay, so this is formed through Bangkok Declaration. So, it was formed in, in the year 1967 through Bangkok Declaration. So, the other factor that we need to understand is that these Asian countries are strategically 
uh, their location is strategically very important because why it is very important because they are located in the junction of the Indo-Pacific. If you understand uh, this location of the Indo-Pacific uh, uh, and uh, these Asian member countries, so on uh, their east it is Indian Ocean. So on their left it is, uh, sorry, uh, it is not Indian Ocean, it is Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean and on their left it is Indian Ocean. Right. So, uh, if you look at the location of the Asian countries, they are located at the junction of the Pacific Ocean and also Indian Ocean. So, because of this reason, they are strategically very important. So, their location is very important. So, therefore, Asian grouping is a fo focal point for both regional and global cooperation. Okay. So, because of its important location, several uh, regional and global players have been showing interest to engage with the Asian countries. Right. So, after that, we need to discuss about the opportunities. So, what are the opportunities Asian provide for India? So, if India started engaging with Asian, if India started capitalizing Asian's eagerness to engage with India, so what will be the opportunities available for India? So that is what we need to understand. So first and foremost is the potential market. Okay. Now, in fact, so if you look at the data, Asian member countries constitute the third largest market in the world. So they are the third largest market in the world. So now we have been giving impetus to the domestic manufacturing. So domestic manufacturing and also exploring the markets. So, since uh, Asian is the third largest global market, so it could provide, it could have, it could have the potential, or it could become a, a potential market for India, so that India utilizes Asian for its exports. Okay, so uh, India destine its exports to Asian member countries. So, after that, we we need to talk about the convergence with the Indo-Pacific strategy, okay? Now, uh, as I've already told you that Indo-Pacific is an emerging geostrategic construct, okay? Now, every big player come into the Indo-Pacific region and they have been coming up with the Indo-Pacific vision. So, their overall objective of their Indo-Pacific vision is the Asian centrality, Asian centrality. In fact, India has also announced its own Indo-Pacific policy. So, in that policy also, India announced Asian centrality. So, therefore, the convergence with Indo-Pacific strategy of India will place or will places Asian at an important, uh, you know, uh, it gives importance to Asia. Now, ASEAN is a, a crucial component of India's Act East policy and also India's Pacific strategy or Indo-Pacific strategy. Now, in order to improve India's ties with the several East Asia and Southeast Asian countries, India earlier announced in the year 1992, India announced Look East policy under PV Narasimha Rao government. So later, the, the Look East policy was changed into Act East policy by the present government in the year 2014. So however, if you look at Act East policy, it is more proactive engagement of India with the East Asian and Southeast Asian countries. So therefore, uh, if you look at ASEAN grouping uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in fact, in India's Act East policy and Indo-Pacific strategy, ASEAN has a very important position. Okay, so overall, it has been reflecting the convergence of interests in the region. Now, within the region, India had uh, India has several interests. So, what are the interests? Now, uh, in increasing India's cooperation with all the member countries in the region. 
containing Chinese dominance or Chinese influence and also ensuring free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific rules-based order, freedom of navigation and freedom of overflight as some of the interests of India in the region. So therefore, the convergence with the Indo-Pacific strategy of India will help achieve all its objectives. Okay. After that, we should also discuss about uh, the growing Chinese influence in the region. So as I've already told you, the Chinese influence has been increasing, particularly in the South China Sea. China has been building artificial islands, the Senkaku Islands, Parcel Islands. Okay, so China has been building artificial islands and China has also intensified its military presence in the South China Sea. Intensified military presence in the South China Sea. So this has often led to even direct confrontations with several other countries like even Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam. Therefore, Countering China's influence in the region is one of the important objectives for India. So for that, ASEAN is very important. For example, in Indonesia, so in Indonesia, India has a naval base, Sabang. Okay, so this is very near to Malacca Strait. Malacca Strait is a strategic, uh, you know, uh, strategic uh, uh, trade route. We all know about that. And India having such naval bases and strategic presence in the Indian Ocean region, Asian countries play a very important role. Okay. So therefore, in order to counter Chinese influence, India's active cooperation, active engagement with Asian countries will help India achieve its objectives. And India's greater presence will also counterbalance China's influence in the region. So China's influence has been increasing because of its huge military and economic potential. So uh, military might and economic potential. So therefore, in order to counterbalance and counter China's influence, India's active cooperation and engagement with Asian countries is very crucial. So after that, we should also discuss about the connectivity with Northeast. Now, India has been making efforts to improve connectivity to Northeast. Generally, Northeast is the least integrated region in the world. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, in India, it is not, uh, you know, it is one of the least integrated. A very a narrow corridor called a chicken neck corridor. Okay. There's a very narrow corridor and uh, there's no direct uh, sea route to northeast and even railways were also not well developed and the topography has also been a major problem in this regard so therefore india have been making efforts to improve connectivity in the northeast region okay so how it has been making efforts so, uh, several ways it has been making efforts for example recently uh, india myanmar thailand relateral highway so this India Myanmar Thailand trilateral highway will improve connectivity. First, secondly, there is also uh, uh, you know uh, the Sitwe port that is also connecting the northeast uh, from Myanmar. So therefore, uh, Myanmar and uh, uh, all other uh, Thailand and uh, Myanmar are also part of the Asian grouping. So these connectivity initiatives with Asian can boost economic development in India's northeastern states. So therefore, it positioned them as hub of regional trade and commerce. So these will be the opportunities that Asian provide for India. Okay, so these are the opportunities that Asian provide for India. Now, the next uh, important opportunity that Asian provide for India is uh, a rules based order. So as I have already told you that there are set of objectives for India. Uh, because of those objectives, uh, it is important for India to engage with Asian countries. So what are those objectives? So they are free, 
open and inclusive indo pacific along with freedom of navigation and open flight so therefore uh, in order to ensure the rules based order in the indo pacific region where asean has a dominant role we need to constantly continuously engage with all other asean countries so therefore in this context asean plays central role in promoting the rules based order or rules based security architecture in the indo pacific region so when the rules based order is established in the asian region so it it leads to regional stability and prosperity now the regional stability and prosperity is in india's interest because it further strengthen india's cooperation with all other asian member countries so it will lead to the greater presence of india greater influence of india in the region so that it could counterbalance china in an effective manner now after that we should also discuss about what are the areas of cooperation between india and asian member countries so what are the areas of cooperation so in what areas we have been cooperating with the asian member countries so however if you look at the cooperation uh, of india with asian countries we have been cooperating on a, a wide range of issues okay so this cooperation can be called as a broad level co cooperation okay right so uh, india already announced the at least policy okay so this is one of the proactive policies of india to engage with the southeast asian member countries so india had also announced sagar security and growth for all in the region so this sagar along with india's act east policy has made india's influence or india's presence felt permanent in the region so if you look at the areas of cooperation of india along with uh, the asian countries first and foremost we need to discuss about the asia annual summit okay india currently has several annual summits with the asian member countries so annually we have been organizing or we have been convening the annual summits so in these annual summits we discuss about uh, the trade commerce culture people to people ties okay so that we explore the opportunities to further strengthen the relationship of india with these asian member countries okay now if you look at the evolution of india's ties with the asian member countries so how is the evolution of india's ties with these asian countries so first we have started the sectoral dialogue partner okay so earlier we were the sectoral dialogue partner for the asian grouping so as i've already told you asian was started in the year 1967 so our first engagement with asian was sectoral dialogue partner and from sectoral dialogue partner to, we have become a dialogue partner in the year 1996 so now we have upgraded this relationship to a summit level in 2002 so since 2002 we have been convening the annual summits with the asian member countries so the other important area of cooperation between india and asian is trade and investment okay so uh, uh, these two uh, member these two parties both india and asian they have signed the free trade agreement okay so uh, what is free trade agreement so in free trade agreements two parties are determined to reduce the tariffs and non tariff barriers so that the uh, the they explore the opportunities for the trade that is for the mutual benefit of both these parties okay so they have signed the free trade agreement and the free trade agreement has led to a tremendous increase in trade and investment between these two countries or these two groups so one is asia and other is india now uh, if you put this into perspective uh, if you talk about the data asian is india's fourth largest 
trading partner. In terms of trade, Asian is India's fourth largest trading partner and the total trade of India with Asian member countries stood at dollars 110 billion. Okay, so this is the one of the uh, highest uh, India has with other uh, countries. Okay, so in fact, even though the total trade is 110 billion uh, US dollars, but India has a, a you know negative trade, right? We do not have surplus trade with Asian member countries. So what does it mean when we say about the negative trade balance? Uh, it means that we have been importing more than exporting to the Asian countries. Importing more than exporting to the Asian countries. So this is the negative trade balance. So after that, we should also discuss about the regional connectivity. <laughs> okay. So uh, regional connectivity in terms of the India, Myanmar, Thailand trilateral highway. So this will give impetus to the regional connectivity connecting India with the Asian member countries and the other factor that we need to understand is that IMT also have significant impact on Northeast. Okay, it would lead to the improvement in the connectivity in Northeast. So Northeast is considered as isolated and less integrated region. However, government of India have been doing concerted efforts to improve connectivity in the northeast region so therefore apart from the india myanmar thailand trilateral highway we should also discuss about kaladan multimodal transit and transport project so this kaladan multimodal transit and transport project also envisions to improve connectivity in the region so india with the other asian member countries right so this will also improve the Northeast connectivity in India. So if you look at the defense and security cooperation between India and Asian member countries, so in recent past, because of the China factor, because of increasing China's influence in the region, India, Asian have strengthened the defense cooperation. Okay, so there's a tremendous growth in the defense cooperation between India and Asian member countries. So now, the defense cooperation has reached to a such a level that they are jointly organizing military exercises. Okay, so the example of these military exercises is Asian India Maritime Exercise and also Asian Defense Ministers Meeting Plus. Okay, so the defense and security partnership has also taken to a next level because of the Chinese influence and India's eagerness to increase its influence in the region. Now, after that, the socio-cultural aspect of the cooperation is very, very crucial. So, because we have the civilizational ties, common culture with several East Asian countries, several Asian countries. So, therefore, we have been focusing on promoting the cultural exchanges and also people-to-people now, for long-term cooperation, long-term partnership between any of these countries, people-to-people -people contacts and cultural exchanges are very important. Okay, so why they are important? Because they are foundations for long-term cooperation. So they generate goodwill and goodwill is also very crucial. Okay, so whenever there is a goodwill, even if these two countries have differences those differences can be resolved in an amicable manner so uh, the examples of such socio-cultural cooperation between india and asian member countries include regular student exchange programs now asian member country students are being invited to india every year as part of the student exchange program now after that special training courses where Asian diplomats were also held and even there is an exchange of parliamentarians so that each of uh, these groups can understand the concerns, existing challenges and areas of cooperation in a better manner so that there will be a convergence between India and Asian member countries and
and that would be a step stepping stone for the next level cooperation now after that we should also discuss about the issues and challenges between india and asian relations so what are the major issues and challenges between india and asian member countries so first and foremost we have to discuss about the trade imbalance so even though the bilateral trade reached to around 110 billion us dollars but india has negative trade balance okay so or it can also be called as trade imbalance okay now if you look at the india's trade deficit with asian member countries so we have been importing around 68 billion worth of goods and services however we have been exporting just 42 billion worth of goods and services so therefore we have a, a huge trade deficit with asian member countries right so this uh, amounts to around uh, 26 billion trade deficit worth of 26 billion and even if you look at the nature of engagement of india with uh, the asian member countries so uh, india's engagement can be compared more to a bilateral engagement okay so india is engaging at the bilateral level not at the multilateral level or at the uh, you know with the asian as a whole this is another major challenge okay so on the other hand if you uh, compare india's engagement with asian uh with the chinese engagement china have been engaging with the asian grouping as a whole so that is another major draw uh, you know drawback in india's engagement now after that in recent past there is also growing chinese presence in the region now of course chinese uh, aggression has uh, uh, you know more visibly seen in recent times because of chinese increasing military might and its huge economic potential or financial position so therefore in this context the chinese presence has been increasing so the existence of other regional powers like china have been limiting the ability of asia to harness india's potential for regional stability okay so the chinese presence not just chinese presence but all other regional powers have been eager to engage with the asian member countries okay so after that we should also discuss about the limited connectivity okay now even though we have uh, recently announced the india myanmar thailand trilateral highway and kaladan multimodal transport and transit project so if you look at the connectivity it is very limited okay so these efforts even not given proper results why because uh, india traditionally lacks the capacity to deliver the projects on time this is the major challenge with india so therefore despite there were concerted efforts to improve connectivity both physical connectivity and even digital connectivity between india and asian countries but these efforts were not given sustained results okay so these uh, efforts remains limited now because this lack of financial capacity between india so uh, the willingness of the country so is also very important so therefore it affects whenever there is a limited connectivity it impacts trade investment and people to people ties between the member countries okay so this is all uh, about the challenges so we should also discuss about way forward what should be the india's way forward to improve india asia relations so first and foremost we need to discuss about the quad grouping so quadrilateral security dialogue was uh, established okay to limit chinese influence in the region so therefore in this context we need to enlarge quad quad already have all the like minded countries australia japan us and india but there is a need for quad plus arrangement okay so this quad plus arrangement should also include asian member countries so that's how we can ensure asian centrality that's how we can further 
enhance india asia relations <clears throat> now after that we should also discuss about maritime security in the indo pacific region okay so already india is are uh, known with the name as net security provider because india is quick to respond in case of any eventuality so even in maritime security maritime domain awareness this is called as maritime domain awareness humanitarian assistance and disaster relief so in all these aspects india is first to respond to provide relief to these countries so therefore asian countries have limited military ties with china okay so why they have limited uh, military ties because of the existing maritime disputes with asian countries uh, having such maritime disputes with china so therefore there's a vacuum that is being created and india can fill this gap and become a significant military partner in the region so as i have already told you that india already have a maritime cooperation with several asian member countries whether it is singapore and even india have a naval base at sabang indonesia so after that so the cultural cooperation or the cultural engagement should be further strengthened so there is a need to strengthen the cultural connect of india with asian member countries for example buddhism is a common cultural factor that we can rightly leverage through tourism okay so tourism need to be further encouraged between india and other asian member countries okay so through creative branding it can be done we can promote tourism between india and asian member countries so after that we should also discuss about strengthening the connectivity so we have announced imt india myanmar thailand trilateral highway and also kaladan multimodal transport transit project so these projects need to be quickly delivered okay so uh, apart from delivering these projects the connectivity both the physical connectivity and the digital connectivity needs to be further enhanced between india and asia member countries because that would be the crux of boosting trade investment and tourism between these countries so a visa free regime can also be established to further boost tourism trade and people to people contacts okay so this is how you can write an answer and when you are writing conclusion so uh, uh, you know you, you just emphasize on india having a strong strategic partnership with asian countries okay so that covers all the areas whether it is commerce connectivity culture tourism okay so even the military and security aspects so in this way you can conclude this answer now we'll discuss the next question so the next question is with respect to russia ukraine war okay so this question is with respect to russia ukraine war and india's ability to a play you know a peacemaker role india's ability to play a peacemaker role so uh, we all know that uh, uh, the war between russia and ukraine broke out in the year 2022 okay so february 2022 there was a war uh, broke out between russia and ukraine so the war has a huge implications a huge consequences for the world in terms of food security energy security and even fertilizer security all these are major concerns for countries like india and other developing countries okay so however along with that there is also a huge humanitarian crisis huge humanitarian crisis that india is no longer silent on why because india has been looking on to shoulder the larger responsibilities so india is no longer shying away from taking sides for taking responsibilities so in this context india wanted to play a key role india wanted to play a proactive role so in this context the question has been asking that india can play the role of a peacemaker in the russia ukraine conflict so this is the statement you need to justify this statement in the light of 
the foreign minister S. Jayashankar visit to Russia in November 2022. So, a foreign minister S. Jayashankar uh, uh, had a visit to Russia. So, in this context, how India could play a role of a peacemaker to establish peace, okay, establish a ceasefire between Russia and uh, uh, Ukraine. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, over a period of time, if you look at uh, India, so India's global might has been increasing. <coughs> now, India has been mixing both hard power and soft power. So, not just relying on just soft power alone. That was India's earlier idealistic policy. Idealistic policy guided by the principles of non-aligned movement. Now, in this context, how India could play a peacemaker role? So, that is being evident from the fact that when Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, had a bilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. So, in that particular meeting also, Indian Prime Minister directly said that this is not an era of war. So, this very statement has been quoted by several leaders even in the United Nations and in G20 summit that took place last year in Bali, Indonesia. So therefore, you can imagine uh, India's influence, so India's ability to play a role of a peacemaker. Right. So in this context, uh, first uh, try and understand the context that is being given in the question. So external affairs minister Jay Shankar had a visit to Russia in November 2022. Okay, so that was a bilateral visit of India's uh, external affairs minister. So, in the backdrop of this particular visit, there is a growing international interest that how India could influence Russia to reduce its offensive or prevent its offensive on Ukraine. So, that is the essence of establishing diplomatic you know, uh, that is the essence of arriving at a diplomatic solution in the Russia-Ukraine war. Okay, so, uh, you know, if the diplomatic uh, negotiations are successful, that could prevent this humanitarian crisis and that would also provide a solution for the energy security, that, uh, you know, the energy crisis and food crisis and even the fertilizer issues okay that could provide a lasting solution for all these aspects now uh, in this context we need to understand how uh, india is potential to uh, you know convince russia so this can be evident from the fact that there are two examples given here okay so in the first example uh, you know uh, it is about the grain deal the Black Sea Grain Deal. So, what does this Black Sea Grain Deal? Now, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, so uh, Russia and Ukraine have been contributing for the majority share of global food grains. So, because of the war, the food grains were stuck in these countries. So, it is important and it is also essential to release those food grains to ensure energy uh, food security across the globe. Because they were, they were uh, increasing food prices, especially wheat. So there was a Black Sea grain deal. So India had played a very important and instrumental role in convincing Russia for the, uh, you know, Black Sea grain deal. Okay, so uh, when a critical deal was brokered by United Nations and Turkey to free up millions of pounds of desperately needed Ukraine grain. Okay, so there was a deal and that is being brokered by United Nations and Turkey to free up or release millions of pounds of grain from Ukraine. Okay, that was stuck in uh, Ukraine because of this war. And in this particular context, India played an important role behind the scenes. Okay, so 
uh, you know uh, india convinced russia for this deal in the background or in the behind okay so uh, which had been blockading the grain ships so in the black sea in fact russia has been blockading the grain ships however behind the scenes india had played a very important role convincing russia so this is the first example and the second example uh, is about uh, you know there was a jeforogia nuclear power plant so please remember this jeforogia nuclear power plant upsc may ask in your next year prelims question paper because location based questions has also been asked by upsc okay where it is located it is located in ukraine jeforogia nuclear power plant so two months later when russian forces were shelling at jeforogia nuclear power plant in ukraine leaving the world anxious about nuclear catastrophe okay so if russian forces continue to attack the jeforogia nuclear power plant where ukrainian soldiers uh, you know so it is uh, you know expected that the uh, ukrainian soldiers were hiding in the jeforogia nuclear power plant so if russian soldiers attack this power plant that would lead to a nuclear catastrophe now in this particular context india stepped in again and asked russia to back off because india clearly says that there will be no use of nuclear weapons by russia so this is the kind of a role india played in the context of russia ukraine war so apart from that what is india's position with respect to russia ukraine war that clearly shows india's ability to establish a, a peace or, or india's role to play a peacemaker uh, you know india's peacemaker role so firstly a more calibrated stance that was being adopted by india in the past few years with respect to russia ukraine war okay so this is a uh, being evident from the fact that india called for immediate cessation of violence and hostility okay so india permanently called for immediate cessation of violence and hostility between these countries so in fact india had also called for respecting territorial integrity and sovereignty along with un charter and international law respect for un charter and international law so this was india's concerns india clearly conveyed its concerns to uh, the russia and ukraine even in Uh, even at the united nations and india continuously maintained that dialogue and diplomacy is the path forward so this is what india has advocated to both these countries ukraine and russia so dialogue and diplomacy is the path forward or the way forward now after that when it comes to uh, nuclear use of nuclear weapons so india clearly says that these nuclear weapons must be off the table they are, uh, india says no to the use of nuclear weapons because india is one of the responsible nuclear powers so as russian president putin and other russian leaders made nuclear threat india expressed a deep concern with respect to the use of such threats firstly and secondly india clearly said that no side should resort to the use of nuclear option okay. so they should not use nuclear weapons so this is what india said to both the sides so in fact later the central intelligence agency chief has confirmed that prime minister modi's concerns about the use of nuclear weapons by any party or mostly russia have had impact on the russians amid the ukraine war so this is how india had played a very important role in preventing larger conflict or escalating this conflict to a, a nuclear uh, war and in fact india had played a peacekeeper role that had limited russia's offensive now after that so uh, when we talk about the shanghai cooperation organization and g20 uh, summits india and russia both are members of sco and g20 right 
So in fact, when Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a bilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin at Samarkand in September 2022, he clearly says, Prime Minister Narendra Modi clearly says that this is not an era of war. So this is being resonated across the world. In fact, uh, several leaders have also uh, openly praised uh, India and Prime Minister Modi for this, uh, you know, direct, uh, when he directly says this to uh, Vladimir Putin. So this become India's mantra. Okay. So even during the G20 declaration and Bali, in this summit also, so this is not an era of war that is being included. Now after that, the first virtual summit of the vice of the global south. So this first virtual summit that was being organized by India. So this was hosted by India and this was the first of its kind summit named as voice of the global south. So this particular summit has raised issues with respect to rising prices of food, fuel and fertilizers because these developing countries have lot of concern with respect to rising food prices, fuel prices and even fertilizer prices. So India has, uh, you know, uh, India has been taken up the role of leader of the global south. So because of this reason, India has raised this issue. Okay, so that could influence or convince Russia to reduce its offensive on Ukraine and uh, uh, back to diplomacy and negotiations and that reduces the conflict or escalation of conflict. In fact, it has also flagged the concerns for the developing and less developed world on energy and food security. In the very same summit, the voice of the global south. Okay, so uh, this will now be the consistent theme of the ongoing G20 summit as well. Okay. Now, so could India help broker a peace deal in Ukraine between India, uh, between, uh, you know, Russia and Ukraine? So can India really have that capacity to broker a peace deal? So if you look at India's our ties with uh, Russia, so we have a special and privileged strategic partnership. Okay, so we have special and privileged strategic partnership. And in fact, Russia is considered as one of the all weather friends of India. So in this context, we have good relations with both Russia and even West also. So therefore, uh, you know, we can leverage those ties with all the parties and bring them to the negotiating table. Okay, so uh, through diplomacy, these differences can be settled so, and India truly have that capacity. Okay. However, one of the biggest obstacles uh, for India to play this peacemaker role is both Russia and Ukraine don't want to talk. Okay. So, they don't want to uh, come to the negotiating table. So, they have not chosen diplomacy as a means. Rather, they have chosen violence. So, however, we cannot undermine India's role as a, a potential peacemaker because it has good relations with both the parties. So therefore, in future also, India could play a very important role. So uh, the other thing we need to understand that India now wanted to shoulder the greater responsibility at the global level. So that will help India's ascendancy to the superpower status. Okay, India has been aspiring for. So this is how you can conclude this answer. So the next answer, uh, that we are going to discuss is about the uh, you know recently the Asian countries okay all the member countries of Asian right from Middle East Central Asia Southeast Asia South Asia and East Asia so this Asian continent has become a place for uh, you know great game now all the superpowers have been focusing on this Asian region Okay, all the superpowers have focused on this Asian region. In fact, this Asian region is, uh, you know, a place for global heavyweights like India. 
China, Asia, South Korea, Japan. Okay, so even Australia. So therefore, all the countries have recognized the geopolitical, geoeconomic, and geostrategic importance of this region. Okay, so accordingly, they have been playing a very important role. Okay, so they have been coming to this region. So they have been announcing their own strategies, whether it is US, European Union, and even Russia. Okay, so this has become a place for a great game at the global level. Now, in this context, we need to understand what exactly a geopolitics, geoeconomics, and geostrategy. <coughs> right. So, before actually uh, understanding those aspects, first uh, we need to understand uh, the growing prominence of Middle East or West Asia. Okay. So, West Asia is a uh, very important for global uh, energy security. Firstly, and secondly important trade routes are located in west asia okay so apart from that in fact several geopolitical scholars have emphasized on the dominance or control of this region dominance or control of the west asian region is very important for global dominance so taking you from this uh, in fact china has increased its presence in West Asia. Recently, it has brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Otherwise, they have been maintaining antagonistic relations. And similarly, these countries have also adopted the policy of strategic autonomy. So earlier, they relied on US for their security and for their defense purposes. Now, they have been diversifying their economies and their ties as well. Okay, now Central Asia has also become very important because of huge mineral resources in this region. And China has been exploring opportunities to exploit these mineral resources and even having a larger geopolitical control over this region. So traditionally, if you look at the Central Asian region, it is considered as Russian backyard. It is considered as Russian's backyard. However, China had a leadership position in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization where all the Central Asian member countries are part of. So therefore, in this context, India, China and Russia have been engaging more proactively with all the member countries in Central Asian region. So the other factor is that recently, Taliban have come to power. So they have, uh, you know, overthrown the democratically elected government and they have come to power. So in this context, how the security architecture in the Central Asian region will influence or will impact the security in other parts of this region. Okay. So because of the Taliban taking over the power that would influence other radical elements, fundamentalism, radicalization, and even the extremist elements, and that would threaten the peace in the region. Okay, so this is the Central Asia. And on the other hand, now China and India have been becoming a rivals. Okay, so they have been competing with each other for the dominance within the region. Okay, so however, uh, if you look at the uh, overall capacity or the capability of China, so it is much more than India. So even though India has also been rapidly developing itself, both economically and also militarily, and even India has been cooperating on engaging with other like-minded countries in the Indo-Pacific region like Quad and even Asia member countries to limit Chinese growing influence. Okay, so it has been limiting growing influence of China in the region. So however, on the other hand, China has also been very proactive. So China has announced the string of walls. It has been developing naval bases. It has been, uh, you know, uh, also planning the China-Pakistan economic 
corridor and belt and road initiative to which several asian countries are part of except bhutan and india so after that the asian centrality and big players have been coming to this region and they are cooperating with uh, asian member countries announcing free <coughs> open and rules based inclusive indo pacific and european union russia us have been coming to this region so it has added further prominence to this region for example they have established opus quad grouping and even five eyes network okay so even blue dot network etc Okay, so to counter Chinese growing influence and in uh, so therefore, in a nutshell, I have told you everything about Asian continent geopolitics, geoeconomics, and geo strategic importance. Right. So uh, in this context, what is mean by geopolitics and geoeconomics and even geo strategy? So what exactly these three terms signify? So firstly, geopolitics means that it is defined as a a struggle over the control of geographical entities with international and global dimension and the use of such geographical entities for the political advantage and the correct example is indo-pacific geopolitical construct okay the struggle over the control of indo-pacific between the major countries can be called as geopolitics in the region so after that, when we talk about the geoeconomics, what exactly geoeconomics? So it can be defined as the combination of economic geographical factors relating to the international trade and governmental policy. So they are guided by the geoeconomics. So geopolitics and geoeconomics are sometimes used interchangeably. Okay, so they can use uh, geoeconomics and even geopolitics right so this is the definition of geopolitics now what is the geo strategy so geo strategy symbolizes that a geographic direction of states foreign policy okay a foreign policy of a particular country is directed by the or guided by the geographic uh, location okay so more precisely the geo strategy describes a state concentrating on its efforts by projecting military power and directing the diplomatic activity so this is the definition of geopolitics geoeconomics and geo strategy now after that we need to discuss about the regional geopolitics in the region so when we talk about the regional geopolitics so there is a vacuum which is being created in asia so uh, this vacuum is filled by the axis that is being formed between china pakistan russia and the taliban so they have been filling the regional power vacuum that is being created by the withdrawal of us from the region okay so this has been shaping the contours of the region's geopolitics based on their individual's common interests so all these countries have their own common interests they showed shared own interests so in fact to this axis iran has also joined okay and uh, under the chinese leadership so after that there is an anti american axis which is developing in asia whether it is middle east central asia south asia and even the southeast asian region there is an anti american axis that is being developed okay so this anti american axis is led by china and russia Okay, so most of the countries in the region harbor a deep anti-American feelings. For example, Iran in Middle East. Okay, so this further shrink the American influence in the Eurasian heartland. Now, after that, the China factor. Okay, so post-American power vacuum, the decline and the withdrawal of U.S. and its hegemony in the region. So, this vacuum is filled by China. Okay, so through various policies like debt trap diplomacy, its Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, so uh, the way it, it is providing grants and loans to other countries. So it has been filling the vacuum that is being created by 
US withdrawal. Okay, so China often had a grand strategic plans for the region. So it wanted to create a unipolar Asia, but it wanted a multipolar or bipolar world. Okay, so China has been further strengthening its influence in the region. Okay, so it wanted to establish a hegemony in the region. So it don't want that India to, you know, uh, uh, India to uh, challenge its hegemony. So in fact, China has also announced the Belt and Road Initiative where all other member countries in Asia are part of. Okay. Now after that, this region is also a hub of terrorism. So if you look at uh, the uh, countries like India, they have been facing problems like cross-border terrorism that is being emanated from Pakistan. Because Pakistan are like countries, they have been using terrorism as a tool of their own foreign policy. So especially after the uh, Taliban and uh, Afghanistan becoming a safe haven for terrorism and terrorist hubs, increasing radicalization and fundamentalism in uh, Central Asia and Middle East, so becoming a huge security challenge. So that could threaten the peace and stability in the region. Okay, so this could be considered as one of the biggest challenge that region has been facing, both because of terrorism and extremism. Moreover, the international community may have no choice as of now, so they just have to engage with the Taliban regime that China and Russia have already started engaging with the Taliban regime. So therefore, in this context, what should be the India's approach? Because India's engagement with Taliban is very important in order to have a greater access to Central Asia. Okay, so in fact, the UNSC member countries like China and Russia have also started engaging with Taliban. So in a nutshell, this is what is the changing geopolitics, geoeconomics and also the geostrategic importance of the Asia and it has been becoming a great, uh, you know, a great game, a place for great game. So in conclusion, we just have to mention stress on the need for greater cooperation, greater engagement and need for less tensions and peace in the region. So this is how you can conclude this answer. Okay, so that's it for today and uh, tomorrow also we will discuss uh, some of some more questions. Okay, so if you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.